This Akarang challenge is called Jumping on the Clouds. In this challenge, we're going to receive an array and it's going to contain integers. The integers can only be two values. They can be zero or one. The whole instructions here are about a cloud hopping game. So in our array, the values indicate the type of the clouds. If we see zero in the array, it means it refers to a cumulus clouds. If we see one, it refers to a thunderhead. In the game, we have a player and the player begins the game with an energy level at 100. That is what they say here. Our player has to jump over the clouds, but the size of the jumps is already determined. So that is what we are going to refer to as size K. So let's say K equals two. She's going to jump over the clouds two by two. Whenever she makes a jump, she uses one unit of energy. That's what they say here. If she lands on a cumulus cloud, she still uses only a single unit of energy. But if she lands on a thunderhead, then she uses two more units of energy. There are two things that we need to keep in mind. The first thing is that the game ends when the player lands back on cloud zero. So cloud zero here is the first cloud in the array and zero here refers to the index of the clouds inside the array. The second thing here is that this is a circular array. There is rotation involved. This means that whenever she hits the end of the array, she restarts her path and begins again. What we need to do in this challenge is to determine her final level of energy when she lands back on cloud zero. So let's say we have an array of size eights. These are the items in the array. So we have zeros and ones. Like I said, zero means it's a cumulus cloud. One means it's a thunderhead. And k here equals two. So in our function for our solution, we're going to receive k as a parameter. When we say here that k equals two, it means that she's jumping the clouds two by two. So she begins here, cloud zero. Then she will jump here to cloud two, which is the third item in the array. Then she will jump here, cloud four. Then here, cloud six. And then she will restart. So one, two, and she will land here at the beginning again. So because she's back here on cloud zero, the game ends. So now we need to determine what is her final energy level. At the beginning of the game, her energy level is 100 and she's here. We can say that her position is cloud zero. So she makes a jump of size K, K here equals two, so she lands here. We know that for every jump, she uses a unit of energy, but because she landed here, she uses two more units of energy. Then she makes another jump of size K, she's here. So that's minus one. This value here is zero. So that's a cumulus cloud. She still uses only a single unit of energy. She makes another jump of size two. So now she's here. She uses another unit of energy here, so minus one, but this is a thunderhead. So we need to deduct two again. And then from here, she makes another jump of size K. So one, two, she restarts. And this here is cloud zero. So she uses yet another unit of energy. And let's calculate this 100 minus one, 99, minus two, 97, minus one, 96, minus one, 95, minus two, 93, minus one, 92. So what we need to return is this value here, 92. So this example here that I gave you guys is actually the same from their sample inputs. So let's check if we got this correct. These values here were 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and then 1, 0. If I go here, we have 8 and k equals 2, and the values again are 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0, the same thing. And the sample output is 92 and explain why it's 92 here. So this is exactly the same as what I just explained. And you can see that we got the same outputs. So now let's move into the code. And this is what we have. This here is the solution. So this function is called jumping on the clouds. The function signature is already provided. We have a vector of integers called C, which is our array of clouds. So it will be this one here. And then we have an integer parameter called K. So K is what we've been using all the while. What you see in between here, in between these two curly braces is my function definition. I have my initial levels of energy at 100. And then I'm also using this i variable is an integer and I'm setting that to zero because I want this to help me traverse my array. So this is going to serve as the index for every element inside my array. And then I have this optional variable here n, and this is the size of my array. So how many clouds do I have inside my array? Now, technically I could call the dot size methods all the time, but just for clarity, since they also use N inside the instructions, 
I also wanted to create a variable called n. So now I can have a while loop because I need to move through my array. And this corresponds to our player jumping through the clouds. And we want to run that loop at the beginning of the game. So when i equals zero, because our player needs to make a jump. And we want to keep running our loop so long as our player is not back at cloud zero. So how do we know if our player is back at cloud zero? We can simply use the modulo operator. So to give you an example, again, this here is our sample inputs, k equals two. And now I'm introducing my i variable here, and i corresponds to the index. So at every iteration, the value of i is going to be equal to i plus k, because the size of our jump is size k. So anytime we make a jump, i moves by k size. I can in fact rewrite this. So when we begin, i here equals zero. I'm adding this arrow, meaning that at first, the value of i is zero. So our player here is at cloud zero. Then our player jumps by two, so she's here. So now we have i plus k, that will be plus two. So at that point, i is equal to two. Then our player jumps here, that is four. And our player jumps here, that is six. And then i is going to increase here from value six to eight. So i is going to equal eight. We don't have the index eight inside our array because our array size is already eight and indices are zero based. So how do we know that our player has gone back to cloud zero, which is index zero inside our array? So in fact, I want to rewrite this. I can simply say size of array equals n. So my variable n is going to correspond to the size of the array. And that size is going to be eight in my example here because we have eight elements. So if I want to find if our player has restarted the array, I can simply say i modulo n. And when the index reaches eight, because i begins at zero and it keeps increasing by size k at every iteration. So when it becomes eight, this is going to be equal to saying eight modulo eight. And that's going to give us zero because eight divided by eight has no remainder. The remainder is zero. So when the index here, i is back to zero, we know that our player is back as cloud zero. So that's the logic here. That's why we use the modulo operator and we check at every iteration, what is the value at the index i modulo n. So by now you should know that i modulo n is always going to give us a value within the inclusive range of zero and n minus one. n minus one meaning the last element inside our array or the last index. So what is the value at the index i modulo n? If it's one, then we decrease the energy value by two. Otherwise, if this evaluates to false, no big deal, we still move to that next line because regardless of where she lands, we still need to decrease our energy levels by one. Whenever our player makes a jump, we need to decrease the energy level by one. And at every iteration, we increase the value of i by k. So when this is done, when our player reaches back cloud zero, we need to exit our loop and simply return the value of our energy level. So that's the logic here. I'm going to run this code. We've passed sample test case zero and also sample test case one. So it works for any value of k. It doesn't matter if it's two, three, like if it's an even number or odd number. Um, I'm now going to submit this code. We have nine test cases in all. And we've passed all of them. So that's it, guys, for this HackerRank challenge. It was called Jumping on the Clouds. If you like my HackerRank solution, please subscribe to my channel to support it and turn on your notifications. I'll catch you next time.